Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams for Adobe Video and Motion. I recently had the opportunity to work up some templates to empower a few YouTube creators, leveraging the media replacement feature of motion graphics templates. We're gonna have a look here at how some of these templates were made, some of the key features, and how you can leverage media replacement in your own projects. This set of templates is for Kara and Nate, a couple traveling around the world and documenting it in weekly vlogs. Of primary interest to them was a new branded intro that will let them show off who they are, where they are this week, and what they're up to. So I put together this little motion montage where they can quickly swap out any element they like while maintaining the same flow and narrative. As well, we got into a new logo reveal and an end card too. So let's have a look at how these were created in After Effects and how they're deployed in Premiere. From a functional perspective, we need to break this into two pieces, two distinct motion graphics templates. Sometimes Kara and Nate need to drop a sponsored ad in the early minutes of a video or have some kind of a cut in here. So we need to be able to break when the titles end and when this montage begins. But we also need to have a flow when we sandwich them together. Templates are as much about usability as they are about video and design. So here's how we put this first piece together. This needed to be a poppy, quick, five second kind of sting. Who, what, where needed to be up on the screen quick. All of that is done with text layers animating out from behind mats using the set mat effect. This is a great alternative to track mats, especially when working with vector shape layers and text layers. To use the set mat effect in this way, I've made some large rectangles to block out areas where the text will seem to arrive from behind or hide behind, kind of like invisibility cloaks. Then I put the set mat effect on the layer that's gonna do the disappearing act and and I dial in if I want this to be inverted, etc. This works very well on vector layers. There can be complications when applying it to raster layers or pre-compositions, but in this case, we can leverage making one mat and use it many times. This keeps the layer count down and makes the organization a little easier. For the text movement itself, to have a more casual, relaxed vibe, I've opted to use a ramp shape on the text animator and push a position change through the text. This makes a nice wave of text coming up when you offset that selector through that text. So I have the selector here set to a span from 0 to 50% of the text. Then that selection is expanding as the selection is being offset from negative 50% to 100%, growing as it moves. I recommend using percent instead of index in templates because we can never know how many characters our user might type in. You can play with the easing in the advanced section of the text animator for even more nuance. Ease high and ease low have a direct impact on the shape of this ramp up, as you can see when I adjust them here. But overall, the text animation is pretty rote. We're changing the position of the text animator while changing the position at a layer level. We wanted simple, clean, readable. The major component here is the background footage. This needs to be evocative, but not overpowering. We need to balance the visual interest with readability, which is a challenge of any template. And with the background, we have our first use of media replacement. You can see here in my essential graphics panel, it's open up at the side. It's filled with all the controls that I'm gonna provide later users of the template. To make a layer replaceable, simply drag it up to the essential graphics window. I'm doing this so that Kara and Nate can change out this footage and keep the graphics fresh every time. But many of the other features around that footage are here for readability. If they replace this footage with something brighter, darker, will the text still work? While this is about media replacement, we also need to consider what impact replacing that media will have on the rest of our design. It's for that reason that I've included this checkbox control in the essential properties. Clicking this on and off will trigger a color inversion using expressions. And a checkbox is a really easy control Control to give users because it's a really quick choice. Text not working, just invert it. To simplify on the back end here, I have it linked to this color control with an expression. Here's the expression in question. If that checkbox is at zero or unchecked, the color will be zeros across the array or totally dark. All R, G, B, and alpha values zero. But else, any other state, for example, if the checkbox is checked or a value of one, it's gonna set ones across the board or full white as the output. Then I can simply link fill effect or fill colors of other layers to this color control, and that will control anything that needs to be recolored in this primary color. I use a similar expression with reversed values on the background card here that provides this optional darkening or lightening as well. I also included a checkbox on that darkening and lightening layer for if it's gonna be here at all. This expression here controls the visibility with a checkbox while allowing the original value to be passed through if the box is on. This lets users have quick binary yes, no choices and they have the flexibility if they want to refine even deeper. Returning to our main goal of these templates, making editing faster for our client, we should always have this front of mind. How can we reduce the choices when offering controls? 
Similarly, I've offered the option to blur out the background using an adjustment layer with a blur over that footage and that same checkbox powered expression on the adjustment layer's opacity property. This is an easy way to give users access to specifically affected footage or not without complex controls. Fewer choices equals more speed. But let's get to part two here, the motion montage itself. This final lockup certainly was not the first option we explored. Originally, I presented three concepts to see which one they would like so we could then hone in the motion from there. One emulated how a YouTube playlist kind of looks. One looked more like a split screen triptych. And the third is more like a Brady Bunch Hollywood Squares. They went with the middle option, the split screen. So we just needed to refine it to fit with their voiceover. Every video of theirs starts with the same kind of script that has these prescribed beats telling about who they are and what their journey's been so far. This serves as a guide for the changes of the montage going from one lockup to another and also inform the kinds of motions that I wanted to use. So it starts on We're Kara and Nate. So we should probably start on one large image. Then they talk about traveling the world. So we're gonna introduce all that footage in from the sides, slide it around, showing a lot of varieties of stuff they've been doing. Then there is a turn since now they're living in that hashtag van life and traveling across every US state, we pivot from a triptych to a split screen, and then we shift that split screen in kind of reversing directions. A change of narrative should beget a change of visuals. And we end by returning to a single clip so they can flow this into a line edit very easily. From a technical angle, this is all done with many footage layers and shape layers serving as their mats. Each footage layer has a mat layer above it and uses that as a luma mat. I did this so that I could use white rectangles with black strokes, and then I could thicken that stroke up to make larger gutters between the footage or shrink it down to have no gutters at all. We didn't end up using this feature in the template, but it was useful for me to dial in that look and keep it all organized since I could snap the rectangles to each other and to other elements around using the command or control drag option. Also of note here, the footage is parented to the mats not the other way around. This lets me work up the motion with no footage first or refine it with the footage turned completely off. It's a good way to work when the frame can get complicated with tens of elements moving around, taking up resources to render. It's just nice to be able to simplify sometimes. To make this into a template, it's as easy as dragging all of these footage layers into the essential graphic space. That makes them all into replaceable media. I recommend giving clear labels to the media here as well. Let people know what each means. And we're using a common naming scheme so that later users can know at a glance which footage they're actually replacing when they drag something into this space. When in Premiere, when these are replaced, they might need to be resized, they might be bumped around, they could be zoomed in on, scaled up. That's why mats are a must here in this design. Mats take control of the visible area and they externalize that from the footage itself. And there's no transformation happening to the footage layers at all. So swapping them around has no cascading impact on other parts of the design. These mats also make cropping and resizing really easy. The mat says where the footage will be and how much of it can be seen so that you might do zooms or pans behind these mats, giving you a nice little extra amount of control that masks won't do as cleanly. So when you're thinking about motion montage, mats are your mates. We also needed a way to marry these two elements over each other. So you know the five second intro ends with things kind of closing down to the midline of the comp. And this motion montage starts with everything opening up from the midline using the alpha blending modes on some rectangles to open this thing up. We also did a simple end screen here using techniques and actually elements copy and pasted from the intro. Branding is about consistency. A few tweaks to the composition and using the same control concepts brought us to this frame. One design consideration that is unique here though, if you're making end cards for YouTube, you should know that there needs to be space for the overlay elements that YouTube's own interface will be putting over top of the video later on. So this rectangle here isn't much to look at, but it's gonna be filled with a thumbnail later in the YouTube interface. This strange circle over here will be a circle filled with their channel's icon and the hitbox will extend over this whole area. So you wanna think about those things when you're designing this composition. We also needed to get into the end card pretty fast. These things are gonna be up for 20 seconds at most. So the template can cover the whole 20 if they need it. But the video is basically over. If the call to action is gonna land or if the viewers are gonna click on to the next place we want them to go, we need to use punchy fast motion to get them to this screen. And the replaceable footage behind here is gonna hopefully 
hopefully allow Kara and Nate to put something interesting and captivating that'll keep people around a little bit longer here at the end as they close out the show. Which I guess means it's time for us to close out this show. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you learned a lot about media replacement, a little bit about methodology, things you can apply in your own work. Make sure you subscribe to Adobe Video and Motion on all the social platforms you use. We have more in this very series coming up, so you want to stick around for that. And make sure you turn on notifications so you get all the Adobe updates, tips, tricks, tutorials right from the source. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around the internet.